Hello, everybody. Welcome to Movies by McManus, the channel where we talk about movies, comics, TV, books, any type of media you're into in the context of who created it and what effect it's trying to have on the world around it. I'm your host, Greg, and today we're going to be talking about the 2019 comedy, The Beach Bum, directed by Harmony Corinne. A quick summary. The Beach Bum follows our hero, Moondog, a semi-famous poet who drinks and womanizes his way around Key West, Florida, living off his rich wife's money, who lives miles away in Miami. Moondog neglects his responsibilities as a husband and as a father. He only goes up to Miami for his daughter's wedding, and even that he does begrudgingly. When Moondog's wife is killed in a car accident, which is partially his fault, he's locked out of his bank accounts and his mansion in Miami. His daughter turns his back on him, and he's left with nothing. According to his wife's will, Moondog has to finish his book of poems, which he's been putting off for years, in order to get his piece of the inheritance. Instead, Moondog breaks into the mansion, gets arrested, and is sentenced to one year in rehab. Now, we think this is going to be a turning point for Moondog, but it isn't. He instead breaks out of rehab and goes on wild adventures around South Florida, meeting different characters along the way. At the end of the movie, Moondog's friends and family learn to just accept him for who he is. His book gets published, and he gets his piece of the inheritance, which he ends up just blowing up on a yacht in the middle of the sea. And that's how the movie ends. Now, what's this movie trying to tell us? What's the message? Well, let's look who created it. This is actually one of Harmony Korine's more mainstream movies. The majority of his movies are just collections of bizarre scenes. Loosely connected, if at all, with little to no plot. His previous movie, Spring Breakers, is actually considered his weirdest movie because, unlike the rest of them, it actually has a storyline. I think that there's a clear connection between Harmony Corinne's previous movies and Moondog's poetry, which is also bizarre, vulgar, and sometimes nonsensical. So, is Moondog supposed to be a stand-in for Harmony Corinne? If so, we might get a better look at what the message of this movie is. Corinne clearly views Moondog's lifestyle as being the correct one. At the end of the movie, Moondog doesn't change. It's his friends and family who instead change and accept him for who he is. The movie seems to be suggesting that we as an audience need to be more like Moondog. But how could that be the case? Moondog is lazy. He disrespects everyone around him, and with some of the characters like Zac Efron and Martin Lawrence's character, he actively ruins their lives. Well, let's think of Moondog as the perfect antidote of the society around him. Is it possible that in a world so focused on material wealth and success that it's refreshing to see a character who'd rather just spend his day having fun than doing anything productive? When Moondog's daughter talks about him to her more straight-laced husband, she says the line, he may be a jerk, but he's a great man. He's brilliant. You'll never be great or brilliant. You're dependable. Is the movie trying to say that structure and dependability is what's getting in the way of us fulfilling our full potential? There's a clear difference between locations too. The movie takes place in two different areas, the Florida Keys and Miami. And there's a clear cut difference between the lifestyles of Miami and the Florida Keys. Moondog refers to Miami as civilization. And he can't truly be himself or write his book until he goes back down to the Florida Keys. He says to his wife early in the movie, You know my home is down here in the Keys, sweetie. I'm a bottom feeder. I need to go low to get high. The more down-to-earth and working-class people of the Florida Keys are shown in the movie as being happier than the people of Miami who are too concerned with structure and success to truly live their best lives. In fact, Moondog has kind of made a career out of swindling the more successful people of Miami. The people of Miami believe that he's a creative genius, while the people of Key West, they love him, but more for his crazy antics than his actual poetry. The joke is on the people of Miami, while the people of Key West seem to be in on it. So are the bottom feeders of Key West right and the straight-laced people of Miami wrong? 
Well, the people of Key West definitely seem like they're having more fun. And while the rich of Miami live more comfortably, what's the point of being comfortable if you're not truly happy? Harmony Corinne is a filmmaker who spent his entire career doing whatever he wants. His movies are bizarre and sometimes nonsensical, but established filmmakers and pretentious critics still give him the benefit of the doubt. They still give him chance after chance, and at film festivals, he's still winning awards. This isn't dissimilar to Moondog and his poetry. So are the burnouts onto something that we're not? Well, let's look at a more famous burnout from a couple years in the past. His name was Hunter S. Thompson, and you might know him from his book, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. Now, like Moondog, the myth of who Hunter S. Thompson was seems to be more important than the actual person. At least in the 1971 film, Where the Buffalo Roam, and the 1998 film, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Hunter S. Thompson seems to have this reputation as this counterculture folk hero who would take money from different magazines and piss it away, promising articles that he would never deliver. He seemed to be more focused on living the hippie lifestyle than any legitimate journalism, and because of that, became a hero for many people. It's hard to ignore the similarities between Moondog in this movie and the myth of Hunter S. Thompson both of which spent their entire careers tricking people into believing that they were geniuses. In Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas, Thompson clearly has disdain for the uptight and straight-laced people of the world, not unlike Moondog's disdain for the people of Miami. So does Moondog and by extension Harmony Corinne view themselves as modern-day Hunter S. Thompsons? Well, maybe not. It's important to note that Hunter S. Thompson's life ended tragically, so while the Moondog lifestyle may be attractive and seem like fun, it's not exactly a sustainable one. The movie almost recognizes this. There's a very dreamlike aura surrounding this entire movie. All the scenes are shot at sunset, and even the scenes that are at night have a very neon glow to them. Scenes are shot in montage, and conversations between the same characters will take place over different locations. It's almost invoking the aesthetic of a dream, or a fantasy. So does Harmony Corinne realize that this is just the way we want life to be, and not the way it actually is? Well, let's hope so. So, what do you think about The Beach Bum? And what do you think about Harmony Corinne as a filmmaker? Let us know your opinion in the comments. And if you like this video, subscribe to our channel or check out our podcast. Also, follow us on social media at Movies by McManus. I'm your host, Greg. Have a good night.